I'm David Patterson. I am a professor with the Ackerman Center for Holocaust Studies at the University of Texas at Dallas. <clears throat> and uh, I teach Holocaust Studies courses related to Holocaust Studies. I'm here today to talk about the, the essence of Nazi anti-Semitism. Um, the Holocaust is driven by anti-Semitism. And if we can understand Nazi anti-Semitism, we can go a long way toward understanding anti-Semitism itself. Um, anti-Semitism, in, in the case of the Nazis, is the culmination of many centuries of uh, Western history, uh, history of the church, modern history, and uh, Jewish history. So uh, there are many centuries that paved the way to the Third Reich. Um, going back to uh, almost 2,000 years, when um, Christian anti-Semitism began to set in, began to develop, <clears throat> um, the Jews were regarded as having been superseded, therefore superfluous. The Jews, um, by the end of the fifth century, were, the, were being demonized. Um, they were viewed as a danger to, to the soul itself. The Jews conscientiously reject redemption and salvation. They know very well that Jesus was the Messiah because they, they wrote the book on how to recognize the Messiah. So they must be somehow satanically inspired if they're going to reject salvation that's that's offered to them so you have over the centuries things like uh, blood libel developing jews associated with disease um, the black death in 1349 was uh, blamed on the jews uh, you have uh, the expulsions of jews from every country in christian europe at one point or another um, you have the, uh, the Inquisition, Spanish Inquisition, Portuguese Inquisition, whose aim was to root out the heresy of Judaizing. So uh, the, the Christian Europe had become a culture that, was, that in many ways was steeped in anti-Semitism well before the Nazis came on the scene. The Jews were Christ killers. Uh, the Jews were uh, the source of all sorts of, you know, immorality and so on. In the modern period, um, Jews and Judaism <clears throat> become an object of contempt because Jews and Judaism threaten the, the, the thinking that would make an individual free and autonomous. Uh, to be free is to be self-legislating. The Jews uh, are said to have a uh, a slave mentality because they follow commandments that come from outside. So in the, in the Christian period, um, the Jews were superseded by a new covenant and therefore rendered superfluous. In the modern period, uh, you have a process of thinking God out of the picture, uh, rendering God superfluous. So, uh, and God is superseded by man just as the Jews were superseded by the Christians. Um, and once God became superfluous, so did the Jews. Now, <clears throat> when we get to the Nazis, one of the, one of the things we realize with the anti-Semitism is that it's not just hatred. Anti-Semitism here is a worldview. It's a cosmology. It's about what you, know, what you call metaphysics. In other words, first principles. So, <clears throat> excuse me, anti-Semitism then uh, is not reducible to bigotry or racism or xenophobia. Uh, there was nothing xeno about German Jews. German Jews uh, look just like non-Jewish non Germans um, in, in Germany, in Nazi Germany. So there was, there was nothing strange that, that could meet the eye about them. What was different however, uh, is how the Jewish tradition understood the value of a human being and how a Nazi, the Nazi tradition, the Nazi ideology 
understood the value of a human being. On the Nazi view, a human being has value for two reasons. Uh, one, that person happens to be born an Aryan, and if that's the case, you, you, you already have more value than the other. And two, if you're an Aryan, you take on greater depth and substance through a will to power. The most famous Nazi propaganda film is called Triumph of the Will. Not Triumph of the Truth or, or the Good or Justice or the Spirit or anything else. All of those things are determined by the will from a Nazi point of view. Uh, of course, from a Jewish point of view, the value of a human being from their ancient tradition that comes to the world from Mount Sinai, uh, as, as Jewish religious tradition says, is that each human being uh, is, is created by God in the image and likeness of God, is an emanation from God. Uh, each human being further comes from a single origin, from Adam. Uh, therefore, each of us is tied to the other, essentially and fundamentally, through the soul that comes from God and through our common father, Adam. <clears throat> and the, you know, the rabbis ask, why does God begin with one and not two? And uh, the answer, it, one answer is, so that no one can say to another, my side of the family is better than your side of the family. So each of us is essentially connected to the other. Each of us is, is answerable to a, a higher transcendent uh, truth and law and uh, power in God. And of course, this is, this is a point of view that can, cannot be tolerated by the Nazis. These two points of view can't exist side by side. Um, in Nazi Germany, there's no concept of an unjust law because what is lawful is whatever the, the people and the Fuhrer and the party will to be lawful. Uh, the Fuhrer takes the place of God. The word of the Fuhrer becomes law. Indeed, when, you, uh, when uh, the Von Zey conference was convened in, on January 20th, 1942, um, Reinhard Heydrich, the SS man in charge, uh, of this discussion on how, how we're going to go about exterminating the Jews, right? Uh, insisted that the extermination of the Jews must be done in a legal manner, okay? The Nazis broke no laws, uh, no German laws in the extermination of the Jews. Um, also distinctive about Nazi anti-Semitism is that it, it was endorsed not by what you might think of, you know, as uh, ignorant brutes or criminals or people who had no education. No, it was conceived, promoted, uh, pursued and implemented by the German intelligentsia, by professors, philosophers, doctors, attorneys, uh, nine of the 14 men at the Von Zey conference I just mentioned and had doctorate degrees at one point or another. Every commander of every killing unit had a doctorate degree at, at one point or another. <clears throat> so um, from the Nazi standpoint, and this, this is really belongs to the essence of anti-Semitism as such, the Jews... Uh, it's not that the Jews were all evil. It's that all evil is Jewish. So if you want to eliminate evil, you eliminate the Jews. The Nazi ideologue, Alfred Rosenberg, explained uh, one of the Nazi concepts, uh, which is Rassenzele. It means race, soul. He explained race, soul by saying that race and soul and thought and character are all synonyms. So uh, the, he, he explained that the contagion carried in the blood of the Jew is Judaism. So whether this Jew or that is actually religious or not doesn't matter. They're all car carriers. They're all carriers of the disease. They all test positive for the disease of Judaism, which is what the Nazis have to eliminate. And uh, the disease is 
invisible. It's, it's invisible with Satan, just like uh, you know the, the the virus is invisible. So the Nazi, and it's just as ubiquitous. So the Nazis, unlike any other anti-Semitic movement, they their aim was to eliminate every Jew in the world. The Nazis went to Tromsø, Norway. Uh, which is 220 miles north of the Arctic Circle. They went into the Arctic to Tromsø because there were 17 Jews there and they went to get the Jews. So it's, it's pervasive. It's as pervasive as Satan. Um, and of course, Satan, the ultimate Satan, is the God of Abraham and Isaac and Jacob, the God of the Jews. The war against the Jews was a war against the God of Abraham. So you see this when the Nazis forbid Sabbath observance, they plan their actions according to the Jewish holy calendar. They would forbid at various points burial of the dead. They would forbid Jews from putting mezuzahs on their doors, it's a little container can, with scriptures inside. They would forbid the use of the ritual bath. They would forbid prayer. They would uh, you know, forbid any, any religious observance. Further, even more so, how do you kill God? How do you kill God? With the Nazis, they kill God by targeting the children and the mothers and the fathers. Not just children, mothers, and fathers, but the idea of a child, the idea of a mother, the idea of a father. Children were first targets. Uh, more than 85% of the Jewish children of Europe were, were murdered. Children in the Jewish tradition represent holiness in the world. Creation is held up by the breath of little children, we're taught. The lips of children take our prayers to God's ears because children are, are, are untainted by sin. Their lips are untainted by sin. Um, with the mothers, if the Jews' crime is existing in the world, the most heinous of criminals is the, the mother who brings the Jew into the world. So uh, mothers were systematic tar systematically targeted. Pregnancy, pregnancy was a capital crime uh, in the, uh, under the Nazis. Um, and fathers, teachers, elders were targeted. Fathers are, represent the teaching and the tradition symbolically and, and in reality, they represent memory. Um, if you have read Elie Wiesel's Night, you'll recall that when, when he and his father arrived at the camp, they asked him, the, the prisoners unloading the train, asked him, how old are you? He says, uh, I'm 18. Uh, he says, I'm 15. They say, no, you're 18. How old is your father? He's 50. No, he's 40. If they think you're a child, if they think he's an elder, they'll kill you. They'll kill you both. In the end, in as much as this is, I, I suggested Nazi anti-Semitism is about a concept of the human being. It finds its most horrific, its most concrete expression in the creation of the Muslim man, the walking dead, the ones who, who don't talk, don't eat, don't respond, who, are, who uh, should be dead but are not, the ones who... who who, uh, in the words of Primo Levi, are the backbone of the camp. This is a unique Nazi creation. Um, so, in the end, uh, what do we get from looking at these defining features of Nazi anti-Semitism, which is Jew hatred, God hatred, human hatred, as, as a worldview? not just as a, an emotion. Um, we, we realize, first of all, that how we understand the value of a human being has implications not just for Jews, but for any human being. What begins with the Jews never ends with the Jews, as Elie Wiesel once said, and this is the reason why. What begins with the Jews begins with how we understand the dearness of the other human being, how we understand our ethical, moral responsibility to and for the other human being. The, the, the Nazis talked about a final solution to the Jewish question. What is the Jewish question? What is it? 
uh, I think the Jewish question that they want to get rid of, that they want to resolve, is the question put to, to the first human beings, the question put to Adam, where are you? The question put to Cain, where is your brother and what have you done? Um, it's a question that the Nazis want to resolve because unless, if they have to answer the question of where is your brother and what have you done, they, can, they can't pursue their totalitarian agenda. Uh, and the, the primary obstacle for them is the Jew and Judaism, Jewish teaching, Jewish tradition. Thank you so much.